Hallelujah. Glory to Jesus. We greet everyone the praise of the Lord Jesus. Reverence to the Word of God. The ones who can, I'd like to invite you to stand up. First book of the Bible, Genesis 19. We're going to read verse 15. Once again, Genesis chapter 19, verse 15. And when the morning arose, then the angels hastened, Lot saying, Arise, take your wife and your two daughters, which are here, lest you be consumed in the iniquity of the city. We praise you, God. We are thankful for these moments that we are spending here in your presence. We, pr we pray, Lord, in Jesus' name, amen. Everyone may be seated once again. The Bible talks about a moment where um, a certain person named Lot, who was Lot? Lot, he was the nephew of Abraham. And who was Abraham? Abraham was the man that God gave a promise to. He said that I will make your descendants as many as the grains of sand. And he said that he was going to bless him and his whole family. And there's a song that says, The Bible talks about Lot and how he was Abraham's nephew and how he took a decision to go with his uncle to, to this journey, to a certain journey. And one of the meanings of the name Lot is companion. So for a determined amount of time, he was accompanying Abraham, which God had given a promise to and made a promise. So during this time of his life, most of his life, he walked in the paths and in the project of God, in the promise because he was accompanying Abraham and Abraham was in fellowship with God. But there was a certain time in his life, a certain period of his life where the Bible says that Abraham and Lot, they grew apart. And since Abraham got um, grew apart from Lot and Lot grew apart from Abraham, it says that there was a contention among them. And and Okay. So um the the shepherds of the the, the cow of Lot were fighting with the shepherds of um, Abraham. So they're their um, people who worked for them were, f were fighting with each other. So in this time, their fellowship with each other, with l both Lot and Abraham, the fellowship was broken. And it's interesting because when we look in the New Testament, the Bible says that the Bible talks about a church that um, that talks about that they are divided. I am, I am of this religion. I am of this denomination. And because of this, contention among the church the Bible says that the, the church separates and during those days Lot he made a decision he chose the Bible says the, the land of the Jordan and during those days 
Lot and Abraham together, they, they lived in tents. And why was this? Because that wasn't necessarily the place that God had separated for them. They didn't have a permanent habitat. They didn't have a, a home, a house that was structured on a foundation. They were living as, as nomads in tents. And there is even a song that says, I'm a stranger in this land. And Jesus, he himself said, I am not from this world. And you are also not from this world. We are not from this world. My kingdom is not one that is going to be here on earth. I am going to prepare places for you in heaven. That is God. Oh, Jesus, he made us this promise. And so in those days, um, they were strangers in their in their own land but lot he made a decision that the bible says because of his own sight and because of what he saw he saw something that was beautiful and the bible says it was such a beautiful place it looked like the garden of eden and it looked like egypt a place that was very beautiful and he chose that place and we are the fruit of our decisions. We are the we are the result of our actions. So we are responsible for our actions. He chose this land and he chose to abide in tents. And the Bible says that with his tents, you know, he went slowly approaching until he got to Sodom. Sodom. And in the city of Sodom, he said, I'm, I don't want to live in tents anymore. He decided to live into the city. He liked the city of Sodom. And he decided to make his permanent um, a home in this city. And the Bible says, my, my brothers and sisters, that there was a moment where God, he heard the cry of that city God he he started to have knowledge and, and knew about what was going on in that city and to resume in, in short words there was corruption and violence in that city later if you want to go ahead and Google or look in the Bible what actually happened in that city the summary is that there was corruption and violence and so the Bible talks about the brothers of that um, the, the servants of God in the figure of three angels they go down to earth but they don't go to Sodom they go to Abraham and so three angels went to where Abraham where where he was and these three angels these three men they went before they went to the floor They made a banquet and these three angels ate with Abraham in, in this banquet. And Abraham, he received these angels in his home. And so while they were walking on the path, these angels met with Abraham. He invited them to his home and they feasted together. So are we understanding that we have to receive that who is sent by the Lord and as they were eating and drinking in that place they left again one of those angels was the Lord Jesus himself he went to Abraham and he said Abraham the Lord God would he hide anything from Abraham when we take the book of Amos Amos It says, certainly the Lord Jehovah would never do anything without revealing his secrets to his servants in which who, in whom trust him, in whom trust in him. So God, he always reveals himself to man. We are living in a moment where God, he is revealing himself to us. 
to our hearts, to our lives. We are living a time where there has been an operation of angels, an operation of the Holy Spirit for His chosen people, for His chosen ones. And chapter 24, verse 31 says that there would be angels with this cry of trump trumpets in the four corners of the earth and of the four corners of the, the sky. And we are living in this prophetic moment where the angels of God, they are getting together with the chosen people of, of, on all of the extremities of the earth and joining with us. And this is exactly what happened in Abraham's day as well, where the angels got together with man. And with these three angels that we were previously talking about, two of them went to the city of Sodom and Gomorrah. Both of the cities, but specifically Sodom. And as they were coming into the city, the word of the Lord says that says that Lot was sitting in the, in the doors of, of Sodom. The doors of Sodom, it leads man to destruction. The door that is Jesus, it leads man to salvation. And so he was here in this door of d destruction that leads to destruction the door of corruption, the door of violence, the door of this city, he established himself there. He lived there. He wanted, He made a, his home there. And how many servants of the Lord are not in this very moment, in this situation, that during a time they walked in the promise, they walked in the paths of the Lord, they were led by God, were led by the Holy Spirit, but because of, of a difficulty, because of a, a fight, or a, a misunderstanding with someone they separated from God's project they made a poor decision because when man when he leaves the spiritual and he goes into the reason and he leans on his own understanding he doesn't lead anywhere good he ends up in Sodom and that's what happened with Lot But the Bible says, brothers and sisters, that in God's fury, in his wrath, he always has mercy. And he remembers mercy. We are here. Do you know why? Because God is merciful. How many of us have already made decisions like this? How many people are lost in this world because of a, a misunderstanding, because of a fight with a brother? How many people have left the project of God to establish themselves in the city of Sodom? And that they and they don't know that they are under a sentence of, of death, of death sentence. And the Bible says then that when Lot saw these men and these these angels, he took position. And in this moment that we are living it's time for man that are living in Sodom to, to take a position for God. What is it that Lot did when he saw the angels of the Lord? The Bible says that he got up, he went to he went to the angels and he fell down before them. He recognized that they were the representation of God. And he recognized that those men, they were servants that were sent by God. And the Bible says that what did he do? He did the same thing that Abraham did. He fell to their feet. And so he knew the project. This shows that he knows what is right and wrong. He was instructed and even though he was in Sodom, he had deviated from the path of the Lord. He chose to do the, the poor choice. But when you are in the spirit, all of us, each one of us, 
sometimes we do bad things and do things that are wrong. Is any one of us exempt from making these bad decisions? We are all subject to this, um, this possibility. But the word of the Lord says that that day he made a decision. And the decision that he took saved his life, saved his home. And you know what the Bible says? It says, believe in the Lord and your, you and your home will be saved. You and your family will be saved if you believe. And so when Lot saw these angels, he went before them. He fell down before them. And he obeyed. He needed those angels in his home. And so tonight, the Lord wants you to leave here knowing one thing. That you need to receive and accept and collect and put into your home the project of God. That is in Jesus Christ our Lord. The word says that those men went to Lot's house bring Jesus to your house just like Lot did for these angels bring Jesus to your house I like I like a text of the Bible that says that Peter he goes to a, a service with Jesus at the synagogue and when the service was over he brings Jesus to his home no one else did this. No one else. He was a little crazy for sure, but he was smart for doing that. We can't leave Jesus at the synagogue. We can't leave Jesus at church. We got to bring him home with us. Don't leave Jesus here. Bring him home with you. And in Peter's house, someone was sick. And Jesus, he cured that sick person that was in his home. So maybe in your home, maybe in my home, there was, there's someone who's sick physically, someone who's sick spiritually, someone who's needy, needing a blessing, with someone who can't come to church for whatever situation or circumstance. So you can bring the church to them. If they can't get up and come themselves, get before the feet of God and fall down before God, then bring Jesus home with you. Bring Jesus to them. And if you invite these people, God, he is going to go with you. He's going to invite them with you. And the Bible says that he brought the angels to his home. And in this moment, the, the men of that city got furious. They all went to Lot's door. Why? do you think this was so because they wanted to take away the angels from Lot's home they wanted to have them leave they wanted to stop and inhibit and and pause put a put a stop to God's project in Lot's life and just know one thing that when you leave here and you bring Jesus to your home the enemy he's gonna try to come after you He's going to try to oppose it. He's going to try to impede it. He's going to try to stop God staying in your life. He wanted those men. He wanted to do bad things to the angels of God. And they wanted to, he wanted them to leave. And this is what the world is going to do. The world is going to try to take God away from you. He's going to try to stop God's project from occurring in your life but the angels were in Lot's home and Lot he thought that he could solve the problem but we don't have that capability but the one who was in our home the one who we brought home with us he has the resources to deliver us from any evil there's no evil and nothing will ever come to you because the angels of the Lord, He has, God has given the angels orders to protect you in your life. That is what is written in the word. And that's what happened in that place. No evil happened against Lot's family because the angels were there specifically to protect his home 
in his family. And this is the blessing that God has for your life, my brother, my sister. God wants to protect your home. He wants to guard your life. He wants to guard your, your, your family. And the presence of God is the preservation of your existence. He's going to preserve you. This is what we depend on. And the word says that the men, they were blinded that day. God blinded those men so that they would not, so that they would not find the door of Lot's home. Because those men, they were after destruction. They wanted to destroy Lot's home, but the Lord God did not let this happen. The world wants to kill us, wants to hurt us, but they are not able to do that. The enemy is not able to do that because God, he blinds the people that are against us, the evil one. If the world cannot see you, if the world, if the enemy cannot find us, it's because the Lord God is protecting us. We are under his protection and his light. And the word of the Lord says that in the morning time, What's interesting is there's a detail here that I was even forgetting about. But when it was when he started to go to sleep is when the problem started. When he went to bed, it's when the problem started. But what's interesting is that it's time for us to wake up. It's not time for us to go to sleep. Just like this song was saying, we have to be vigilant. Because the moment that you, you snooze off, you fall asleep, the problem is going to get bigger. That's when the problem is going to arise. But blessed be the name of the Lord because the angels were there to protect Lot and his family. And in the morning time, the Bible says that. Why as the morning arose? Why that specific time? Because it's a new day. A new day rose through the darkness. And they are living, they were living a new day, a new birth. A new project was revealing to their, was being revealed to their lives. The light was being revealed to that darkness and now they were having understanding of the moment that they were living. Just as us, we are having understanding of the prophetic moment that we are living and a lot of people are not aware of this moment we're living. It's time for us to leave this world. It was time for Lot to leave Sodom because in this world there is a condemnation. The world is in darkness. They are blind. They are trying to combat God's project in our lives. But at this time, the angels of the Lord is operating in our favor. It's operating in the, in the favor of God's chosen ones. And as the morning arose, the angels were next to Lot and Lot accepted God's project into his life he took the angels to his home he had an experience with the angels that saved him from death but he wanted to stay a little bit longer I, I like this place so much that I, I just want to stay a little bit more just you know one more week maybe one more day you know maybe you're like this maybe you like the world maybe you want to stay in the world a little bit longer you know I'm just gonna have fun a little bit more I'm not ready yet I'm not ready to leave yet you know I'm here anyway I'm gonna just enjoy myself while I'm here right this is sometimes how we think why do I have to accept Jesus now I'm so young I have so much time I have so many things to do in this world so much life to live leave it for later I'll accept Jesus later but the word says that there's still time but but we are approaching the the last hour and as the morning arises we are approaching the last hour there's gonna be no time left and we have to be vigilant so that we don't perish in the city in this world and Lot, he was in the door of Sodom. He was at his home in Sodom and he didn't want to leave. But this is not where we are gonna rest. 
the, the journey is not over yet. The word says to get up and walk because the Lord is your rest. He is your refuge. Don't stay home. We, the moment is not for us to be laying down and wanting to delay the blessing. No, the moment is to make a decision and to leave that, leave this place, leave that place. Because if we stay, certainly we're going to be destroyed. And the Bible says that, the verse says, he took a, a while. And the word says, that the angels took him by the hand, his wife's hand in the hands of his two daughters, and the Lord being merciful to him, brought him out and set him outside the city. Sometimes we don't want to leave, right? Sometimes we don't want to leave the city. We want to leave the comfort, your comfort zone. But God is not going to let you perish in this city. God has a project for your life. You are the son and the child of promise. You are co-inheritor with Abraham. You were born of the Holy Spirit. There is a calling of God over your life. You insist in staying here, but God wants to take you out of Sodom, of this destructive city. He takes you by the hand. And the work of God in our lives is the salvation of our souls. And the Bible says that he... And he, the Lord being merciful to him. The word says that the Lord was merciful. He took you and me and each one of us. He was merciful to every single one of us. He took us from this world, not because we deserve it, but because God has mercy upon our lives. And God being merciful, he took Lot out outside of the city. And he said to Lot, escape. And as we're wrapping up here. Verse 23 says, The sun has risen upon the earth when Lot entered Zoar. The word Zoar means small. And he, Lot needed to leave Sodom and go to Zoar. And what's the meaning of this? The Lord is taking you out. He took me out of the world. And he brought me to a small place. Right here. This is a small place. But in this small place, he was delivered from death. In that small place, he found provision and security. And that, in that small place, when he arrived, the Bible says that the sun arose. And who is the sun? Jesus. Jesus is the sun the light of the world he is a son of justice he saves us from this world and he brings us to a small place and god is going to bring us to eternity to this new heaven and new earth and how about for sodom and gomorrah there was judgment there was judgment do you understand the angels of the lord are present in this place and more than that do you remember the three angels? Two went to the city, but one stayed with Abraham, right? The Lord, he might have sent his, the angels to the world to prepare for the destruction, but there is an angel that's here tonight that is speaking to your heart, that wants to give you a word of hope and hope in this world. God loves you. God is merciful, and he wants to save you.
the Lord God, he showed a man tonight that is here. And before him is an hourglass. And this man, he saw that the, the time of this hourglass was running out. The amount of sand that was left was minimal. And so he tried to, to flip the hourglass to gain more time. But as he flipped the hourglass, the time remained the same exact time as it, before it was flipped. So he flipped it again, trying to gain more time. But the sand was still in the same spot. And nothing he did could get the sand to restart. He couldn't get more time. The time is running out. Do you understand? The time is running out. And sometimes you want to live in the past. But you have to live for right now. Because time is running out. My brother, my sister, time is running out. Do you understand? Time is running out. So accept your accept Jesus into your life today while you still have time. The Lord also showed a daughter, a, a, a woman. She has asked God for a, a sign, a, a, def, a definition. I'm going to ask God because until now God hasn't spoken to me and so she, she wants God to resolve something for her and for a long time God she has asked God for something and she asked God that today he would give him a sign so that she would know she he would give her a sign so that she would know whether or not to believe in God are you lacking faith my sister we don't see we don't see and believe but we believe without seeing and if you believe you will see the glory of God but God is merciful to us so you will have a sign when you go home God will give you a sign and you will understand the project of God and you're going to start walking in God's path he's going to start correcting your path the Lord also showed a home a house and this house was falling into quicksand and the family that lived in this home had the quicksand up to their knees and the man of the family the father he came to church tonight asking for um, asking for help and he wanted to build a new home with for his family so he came here to ask for help and the and God showed him a new land that he was going to build his home at and God was telling this man he's telling this man tonight that he will not be alone through this process you built your home in the in the wrong place at first okay and if you built your your house on the sand on the wrong foundation you're going to lose your home but coming here tonight was the best choice because this man is going to save him, himself, and his family. He might lose his home, but he's going to save his, their lives. The, the old project, the old house, is done for. There's a new project that God wants to, to give to this man. A new project, a new home for this family's life. Not, this, not in quicksand anymore, right? Do you remember that uh, the verse in the Bible that says that we can't build our house on sand but on the rock? This man, he built him his house on the sand. And when the difficulties come, when the storms come, the, the sand covers and, and destroys the house. But And it's not a good foundation for the house. But the foundation, which is Jesus, which is our rock, that is where we have to build our house. And the foundation needs to be the word of God. So this man and his family has to be walking in the project of God and on the rock which is Jesus as the foundation and he, coming here tonight was the best choice he could have made but the best news is here we have to still build our homes right but in heaven God already has our homes prepared for us 
Jesus says that I'm going to heaven to prepare homes, prepare places for everyone. And what's most important is our eternity, our life in heaven. God is going to help you in this world, but the most important thing is our salvation. Amen. Let's all be standing. Let's have a glorification to our Lord. My church, my people, thus says the Lord your God. Be happy, rejoice in this moment, because my presence is real in your midst. I have made this meeting with you. I am present here, and my angels are going among you and walking in here. I know there was a battle. There was a battle. There was a huge spiritual battle for each one of you coming here tonight that are here listening to my word and eating of the bread of life. There's no more time to waste. The days are bad. The world is evil and afflicts you. But I am putting at your disposal a salvation that is free and has no price because the price was paid on the cross of Calvary by my son Jesus. Today, you're in my presence. Come into my path. Today is the day of salvation. Do not look back. Straighten your life out. This is the desire of my Holy Spirit to write more names in the book of life. I prepare a banquet for, for all of you. Eat from my banquet. And I tell you that soon you will be with me in the glory in heaven. And the word that I brought for you all tonight, it's to awaken you all so that you can be alert and prepared. Because soon my son is going to come to rapture the church. Glory to God. We praise you, Lord God, because we are so uh, grateful for these moments of fellowship, for all of our all of you have done. We pray that our praise can reach your throne of grace. Protect us during this week. Be with us, Lord, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. And in your name we say that the grace of Jesus Christ, the love of God our Father, and the eternal consolations of the Holy Spirit can be with all of the people of God now and forever. Amen. Everyone can now be seated. We're going to um, announce that tomorrow, 8 o'clock, we have a special meeting with all the men, with all the men of the area of Florida in that congregate in our churches. Everyone is invited to be here present at 8 o'clock tomorrow night for a special service. If you are here visiting us for the first time tonight, know that you are very welcome. Here we have services next weekend we have a special service we have the seminar for the adolescents on saturday night it's going to be at seven o'clock and on sunday morning we have our sunday bible school a little earlier it's going to start at nine o'clock and our fast that we do every sunday from zero to from midnight tonight it's going to actually end at eight o'clock next week because we're going to be here all together at 9 for the Sunday Bible School. And then right after our Sunday Bible School, we're going to have our seminar for children and intermediates. Um, the church is going to be praying for this event. The invitations are back here so that you can give and invite people. Amen. So if anyone still desires to have a prayer, any assistance, just wherever you are at, at raise your hand you will receive the assistance that you so desire to all the peace of the lord